Picture this, a lush tropical island that was recently teeming with life, transformed into dead, barren rocks in just a few decades. But how is that even possible? The nature of Redonda Island faced a real ecological catastrophe. And as usual, it was caused by human greed and short-sightedness. Watch the video to the end, it's going to be interesting. So imagine a lost world, a tiny speck in the Caribbean Sea. This is Redonda Island, the peak of a long extinct volcano, just 30 miles from the state of Antigua. Before humans arrived, this was a true oasis, covered with dense forests and grasses. Its cliffs served as home to thousands of seabirds, creating one of the largest bird colonies in the region. The air was filled with their cries, and the land with unique lizards that weren't found anywhere else on the planet. That's what Redonda looked like in its pristine state. Everything changed in the mid-19th century. Europe and North America were experiencing an agricultural boom and farmers desperately needed effective fertilizers. Traditional methods like using manure, ash or bone meal were catastrophically insufficient for increasing crop yields. The solution was guano. This is fossilized bird droppings that had accumulated over millennia on remote islands. It was the real white gold of that era, incredibly rich in nitrogen and phosphates. Demand was so high that real trade wars were fought over control of islands with guano. American and British companies constantly searching for new sources of this resource discovered that the small island of Redonda was literally covered with three foot deep deposits of guano. In 1865, the British officially annexed the island and miners rushed to it. For the island, this became the beginning of the guano fever. Hundreds of workers arrived on this tiny piece of land, building temporary barracks and a whole infrastructure, including rail tracks and even an aerial cable car for quickly loading the valuable resource onto ships. The island turned into a bustling industrial site. To provide workers with fresh meat and milk, goats were brought to the island. Nobody thought about the consequences. A few dozen animals, left unsupervised on an isolated territory, quickly went wild and began breeding uncontrollably, becoming the first wave of destruction. The goats on Redonda turned out to be like small tireless bulldozers. They devoured everything they could reach, grass, shrubs, young tree shoots. Their sharp hooves destroyed the thin layer of soil that had accumulated over millennia. The island literally started going bald before everyone's eyes. But trouble never comes alone. Along with the ships delivering supplies for the miners, second invaders infiltrated the island. Black ship rats. For them, Redonda became a true paradise. There were no predators capable of controlling their population, but food was abundant. Rats, unlike goats, were predators. Their main target became the defenseless nests of seabirds. They devoured eggs and newborn chicks on an industrial scale. Bird colonies that had thrived here for centuries began rapidly declining. Besides birds, the unique local reptiles also came under attack. The Redonda ground lizard, a small black lizard, and the dwarf gecko, endemic to this island, became easy prey for the voracious rodents. Their numbers dropped to critical levels. By the early 20th century, the guano reserves were depleted. The miners left the island, leaving behind an ecological time bomb. Goats and rats became the undisputed masters of the island. Without human control, their destructive activity reached its peak. Decades passed. The once green, noisy island turned into a lifeless desert. Strong tropical rains and winds washed away the remnants of soil that were no longer held by plant roots. The island began resembling a lunar landscape, grey-brown rock covered with dust and stones. Scientists visiting the island in the late 20th century were horrified. Nothing remained of its former glory. Seabird populations had declined by 90%. Some species, such as frigate birds and boobies, had almost completely abandoned the island, having lost their nesting sites. The Redonda ground lizard, which you could previously encounter at every step, was now considered practically extinct. Biologists struggled to find only single individuals hiding in the few remaining rock crevices. It seemed this unique species was doomed. The combined impact of two invasive species proved synergistic. Goats destroyed the habitat, while rats exterminated its inhabitants. 
This is a classic example of how human intervention, even unintentional, can trigger a chain reaction with catastrophic consequences. The world almost forgot about Redonda. It became a symbol of ecological collapse, a sad monument to human short-sightedness. But in early 2016, a group of enthusiasts, ecologists, and the government of Antigua and Barbuda decided that this story couldn't end on such a tragic note. An ambitious and risky project was born to bring Redonda back to life. The plan was simple in theory, but incredibly complex in practice. It was necessary to completely remove both invasive species from the island, down to the last goat and the last rat. The first stage was the operation to remove the goats. A team of specialists spent several weeks on the island capturing the animals. This was a difficult task, considering the steep terrain and the feral nature of the goats. But in the end, they managed to catch all of them and transport them to the neighbouring island of Antigua. The second and most difficult stage was the war against the rats. Destroying a rodent population on an entire island is an almost impossible task. Any surviving pair could restore the entire population within a few months. A radical approach was required. It was decided to use helicopters. Specially trained pilots scattered pellets with bait containing anticoagulant across the entire island with surgical precision. This poison acts slowly and doesn't raise suspicion in rats, allowing the entire colony to be eliminated. And what happened next amazed everyone. Literally within a few months after the disappearance of goats and rats, the island began transforming. The first green shoots broke through the rocky dust. These were seeds of plants that had slept in the soil for decades, waiting for their moment. Seabirds returned to the cliffs. Boobies, frigate birds and terns began building nests again on the revived island. Their cries, silenced for decades, once more filled the air. Scientists even discovered species that were thought to have long disappeared from the island. After a few years, Redonda was unrecognisable. It was covered with a carpet of grass and flowers. The slopes that had been bare for decades turned green again. The population of the Redonda lizard, which had been on the brink of extinction, grew dozens of times. Their numbers increased to many hundreds. Today, Redonda is declared a protected zone. Access to the island is strictly limited so that nothing can ever disturb its fragile balance again. It has become a living laboratory and a symbol that nature gets a second chance if humans are ready to atone for their guilt, not just with words, but with action. This project became one of the most successful examples of island ecosystem restoration in the world. It proved that even seemingly hopeless situations can be fixed, but it also showed what price must be paid for the mistakes of the past. The story of Redonda Island is a harsh reminder that nature is a complex mechanism where the slightest intervention triggers a chain reaction. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new stories and share your thoughts in the comments. Is it worth spending such enormous resources to save one small island?